Slope and rate of change. Slope and rate of change are interchangeable terms and are synonymous, so it doesn't matter which one you use, they mean the same thing. To introduce us to this, this is a picture that I took while I was in Italy. Almost everybody uses public transportation or very, very small vehicles to get around and scenery like this where you have a bunch of motorcycles lined up together was pretty common. Well, what is slope? When you hear the word slope, you think of hills, you think of mountains, and slope just allows us to put a numeric value to this and to quantify how different different steepnesses are. So slope is our vertical change or the change in the y values over our horizontal change or the change in the x values. This is also known as the rise over run because your y values when you're looking at a coordinate plane your y values change when you go up and down your x values change when you go side to side. So rise over run means that you change your y's over changing your x's. We also use the letter m to denote slope. You can think of m as in mountains and that may help you to remember what that letter m means. For our purposes we are also going to think of slope as y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So this is our changes in y's over our changes in x's. Some other pertinent information. A graph that rises from left to right has a positive slope. Conversely, a graph that falls from left to right has a negative slope. Example one, find the slope of the line passing through the ordered pairs negative four, eight, and five, six. Well, looking at these two ordered pairs, we have two x comma y values. This is where those x2, x1, y2, y1 values come into play. The twos mean that that's coming from the second ordered pair, or 5, 6. The ones mean that they're coming from the first ordered pair, or negative 4, 8. So since it's the first ordered pair and since it's the second ordered pair, you're going to use what are called subscripts to help you remember. So since this is 5, this is the x value from the second ordered pair, we're going to put a subscript of 2. y from the second ordered pair, we're going to put a subscript of 2. And the same with point 1. We'll put a subscript of 1 for each of those. So for this problem, we're going to take the difference in our y's over the difference in x's. So y's we're going to have 6 minus 8 over our x values which will give us 5 minus negative 4. I would do a leave change opposite with both of these. So that gives us 6 plus negative 8 and 5 plus positive 4 leaving us with a slope of negative two ninths. Since this slope is a negative slope, that means our line is going to fall or go down from left to right. Try this one on your own. Pause your video at this time and work through this problem. Did you get negative 11 sixths? you need to make sure to simplify your fraction. It's okay when you're dealing with slope to leave it as an improper fraction. It's important to also note that negative 11 six is the same as 11 over negative six and also the same as negative 11 six. Finding the slope on the coordinate plane is actually a lot easier than finding the slope when you have two ordered pairs. I don't recommend graphing ordered pairs, especially if they're very large or very small, but if you already have a line graphed, it's pretty easy to figure out the slope. First thing you need to do, find two ordered pairs that are definitely ordered pairs. So the ordered pair 0, 4 looks really good. I wouldn't choose this ordered pair 1, whatever it is, because we don't really know what the whatever it is 
actually equals. It could be 5.2, it could be 5.1496347. We don't know. Let's see another ordered pair that looks good. This negative 3 is one that's definitely on the kind of crosshairs as well. Remember we said that slope was rise over run. So if I go from the point on the left to the point on the right, I'm going to rise 1, 2, 3, 4, and I'm going to run 1, 2, 3. So my slope, again, is rise over run, so that's just going to be 4, over 3. Your turn. Try this problem. Remember what happens when a line falls from left to right. Pause your video at this time. Did you get a slope of negative 2 thirds? If you did, give yourself a big giant eyed smiley face. with some kind of crazy eyes. If you did not, go back and try the problem again. Let's look at this one. For the slope of this line, we can pick any two points again. And we're looking for the rise over the run. So our rise, I'm going to go up two. For our run, I'm not going to go over any. So that's 2 over 0. Now for 2 over 0, you can't have two pieces of pizza if no pizza exists in the room. So this is a special case known as undefined. So anytime we have a vertical line like this, it's undefined. Try this problem on your own. Just a hint, your answer is not undefined with this one. Pause your video. Did you get a slope of zero? If you did, give yourself a star. If you didn't, go back and try again. In summary, a vertical line has an undefined slope all horizontal lines have a slope of zero. For your homework assignment tonight, find the slope for the first two problems. For the third problem, draw a graph with a line that has a slope of one half. See you tomorrow.